But I'd like to uh, cover uh, two topics. In fact, these two topics are uh, uh, combination or integration of uh, where we are right now. And again, this is the uh, how we analyze the slope stability. Uh, the way I want to uh, present is uh, first is to use a classical method. The classical method that uh, allow us to do a slope stability analysis. So sort of kind of review uh, some of the material because I think most of the audience, some people may not have a, a, a background, deep background from that. And then we see how we can move on and move beyond that. Uh, so I divide this into two parts of, of my talk. And detail of the first part, uh, I will uh, talk about uh, the classical method of uh, slow stability. Mm -hmm. Mostly is uh, what kind of philosophy behind that. And then uh, particularly the, the classical method, we, we use a method called method slides and the calculus effect the same. And, and then we we'll also do a, a user illustration of a method slides under the steady illustration. So we do that both classical as well as to expand to uh, unsaturated or variable saturated condition. In fact, uh, from what I talk today, uh, up to now, as well as uh, Christina's uh, talk, uh, the expansion from classical to the uh, variable saturated is quite simple. All we need to do is to replace the polar pressure by some constraints. Uh, everything else is the same. Then we will use uh, uh, a shallow uh, induced uh, shallow lens line under transient infiltration. And this is a part, a little part of the uh, few slides talk about uh, what the current UHGS triggers model is being implemented uh, using this transient uh, fan. I skip this two case uh, because of the time limit. But in, in fact, I will come back to the uh, next, uh, uh, the last portion of my talk, which is where we use those cases uh, as, as a way to calculate the factor safety. So we should try to move uh, beyond what the current paradigm is, which is stability analysis. So we can ask ourselves why slope uh, are prone to uh, fail? Uh, why, why the flat land when uh, they, they, uh, are not? But slope will come to fail. So that is a, a question we can ask ourselves. And it's a simple way, it's because the slope of mode shear stress and soil is very vulnerable for shear stress. So in other words, uh, they, at a certain point, that when the shear stress reaches a certain limit, uh, they're going to fail. Uh, a little bit more specific, let's say we look at a, a profile, a profile of a flat land. And you look at different points, one point is near the surface, the other point is uh, somewhere down below, and the third point is a little bit deep. So you ask yourself, what is the stress for each of these points? <laughs> so, particularly, we say, what is vertical stress? Because we know each point the stress has a vertical horizontal and it has a shear component. Now, the vertical stress, as uh, everyone knows that, in most cases, is because of gravity. <coughs> gravity pulling down. So that's a vertical stress. So, Near the ground, we have a vertical stress though, because it's very little to be uh, um, as overburdened. But at some distance, you start to see the vertical stress increase. And you go further deep, uh, you get bigger. In fact, you can calculate uh, precisely as, a, as, a, as the, the unit of weight times the depth. Uh, so that is the, <coughs> the, how the vertical stress you can calculate. And the vertical stress that you can, you can ask yourself, so therefore, however, how, what about horizontal stress? We know the vertical stress on the surface. What about horizontal stress? So horizontal stress is complicated. It depends on how you confine your condition. Uh, if you have a flat land, and then even though you, you, which means you don't have a horizontal displacement because it's symmetric, and under that circumstance, you will have a different stress. And that stress has something to do with the vertical. So horizontal stress is very much depend on the constraint of the lateral. In the extreme case, you can have a tectonic uh, larger scale, which actually horizontal stress can push bigger than the vertical stress. But most cases, when the tectonic stress, the uh, horizontal is a uh, thrust is small, you can always think about gravity is the principal stress of the uh, major stress. And in fact, you can calculate the based on even the flat line, what is the vertical stress and what is the horizontal stress. On the, in the case of flat line, you actually can use uh, what we call the bottom ratio. To calculate, so basically you look at uh, the, uh, the the case. Now let's say uh, we change the situation a little bit. We have a vertical cut here. So what I show you here is a, a one big trim slope. Basically, it's a ninety degree slope. Uh, so what happens if you have that kind of situation? 
Uh, let's look at a couple points because even though this is simple, once we understand it, it's a more advanced concept, much easier. And let's look at the, uh, a point A and a point B. It could be in the horizon A uh, uh, one, it could be horizon uh, two. So if you look at the, the horizon one, if I ask you what is the state of stress, uh, the vertical stress, and you say, okay, this is very shallow, horizontal is almost zero because it's close to free to the free surface, which means no stress. So you can calculate uh, basically if I draw the diagram a little more complicatedly. This 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 is a basically a, a B a A one a, a at, at horizon one. So that's the stress state. You see that zero in the horizontal, uh, vertical has some values. Now if you look at it, I ask the same question. Uh, this is the B one. So it's a one uh, at, 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 the, at the point B here. And what is the state of stress? It's G. Because uh, you do have a vertical, it's the same with the, uh, a, uh, in this point, but horizontal will be different. In fact, the horizontal will be bigger. Because uh, why? Because this, this point is away from the free surface. So I draw more circle like this. But the maximum stress are the same because they are same depth. And then when you come back to the, uh, the, another horizon B, and look at the, this point A, it's a typical plateau of the slope. And this point, you have a vertical overburden. So the uh, so this this point you have this this point, and then you have a horizontal almost zero. So you draw this largest diameter I draw here, largest more circle. And you look at the point B here away from the surface. Horizontal stress start to increase because it, the away from free surface. Uh, so that's why there's some constraint. And then if you draw more circle, it will be like this. So now look at this four circle. Like if I ask you a question, which which circle or which state of stress has highest shear stress? So of course it's at the toe because shear stress is the, it, the diameter basically it's in fact a half a double of the shear stress. The maximum shear stress is for this state this point, for this state this point, for this point. So that's a part of the reason here you see that the shear stress at the toe is you know it's it's the highest, it's the most vulnerable. Uh, so that's why I personally I feel that most of slope you see because it, you don't have a very uh, sharp corner. That's the reason for that. It's because of in natural environment, it never existed in a very sharp corner. Because that corner has a very high shear stress, <coughs> most likely it's already fair. It's globally fair. So that's why you get a smoother the corner. So the key point here you want to know is the shear stress, which is equal to the difference between. And that is the key. That is why when you have a slope, the steeper the slope is, uh, the more vulnerable the is subject to fail. Because the steeper that you have, in this case I draw the extreme case, which is vertical stone, that promote the most uh, of the uh, highest shear stress. And you can again look at the, uh, each of the, uh, the classical uh, the, the method that we, what we can do that. And so we ask well, why slope uh, come to a failure, and again uh, it's not. And shear stress that you can reach a failure state, and as I plot here. Depend on point. So, in fact, uh, uh, when you have a slope, if a, if a state of stress is such that uh, it will fail, it, it may not uh, just one point, it can have a, 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 a slope failure. Uh, that failure surface it basically is all this uh, circle, and it, 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 in fact, that it, it reaches the interior's limit. But the state of stress will be different. So, particular near the toe, if you calculate, uh, near the grass, if you calculate the uh, the stress distribution, you will find that this stress actually has a tensile. You know, instead of compression, uh, it's, it's pulling to get uh, apart. And then the, the point of D and, and all this, this has a larger shear stress. And so it's subject to uh, on a failure. And that is the, uh, the you look at the, the, the point uh, where they can be failed. And the other thing is uh, uh, we deal with the material which is subject to uh, rainfall. In other words, it could be dry, it could be wet. So people will ask, uh, you know, how that can impact uh, the hydrological impact of the slope stability. And you can also look from that. Even if you have a material which is a uh, uh, failure, a uh, dry material, a uh, moist material, uh, if you have a wet material, let's say, the failure envelope is like this. In this case, you see that this material, assuming there's no condition. But when you uh, dry the soil, in other words, inside, it will have an increase in cohesion. Well, increase in cohesion is because the suction stress, as we said, that increase because of the disability of interparticle stress increase. And the dry phase sometimes become highest. And that's in the uh, presentation of the shear stress versus the normal stress. But if you can also uh, plot it into the effective stress, in the effective stress representation, the failure envelope does not change. 
What's changing is the suction stress. You know, the jet can go back to here. So you, you have a three different state, depending on whether it's moist or not. And in this case, I usually, the, even the soil originally, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the weather and uh, moisture, they can, they can change it. Yeah. So that is the state of stress that you can think about. But if they reach this point, it's going to fail. So that is the concept. Uh, now let's look at the slope in reality. Uh, the slope is, uh, in reality is uh, <coughs> what will be the determining factor for failure of the slope. Um, we usually use uh, a factor, the indicator we call the uh, factor safety. So what is the factor safety? Uh, factor safety can be defined as slightly different way. But most commonly is look at the, uh, the predetermined failure surface. So this is the classical methodology of the limit analysis. And that geometry is subject to human uh, human uh, imagination, but we consider as a circular, as a straight line, as a, some kind of other uh, geometry. And we basically say, okay, along this line, if you look at the strength, shear strength in particular, how much it is, you put it here, and you look at the current, what is the shear stress, which you need to calculate based on the geometry and material properties, so on and so forth, boundary condition. And you look at this ratio, uh, integral and pi one to C, uh, is it going to reach the, uh, the, the, uh, the strength? So that's a factor safety concept. And the concept actually also, not only just to do that, you can also use the coefficient, because it's a mobilized coefficient versus the real coefficient. And also you can use the internal friction angle concept. So in the classical sense, because we're assuming, even this slope is going to fail, it's not going to stop on the toe or any place. It's going to fail entirely at any line. And that's why they can make this statement that oh, everything will stop. Instantaneous, all that will fail. So that is a we're seeking for that plan where there has a minimum uh, of the factor safety, and then use that ratio to assess our uh, our slope stability. So all point has to be failure at the same time. So that's the classical limit analysis. Uh, you can look at that uh, to uh, to to look at the further uh, infinity slope model. For example, this is probably the most widely used one. Uh, there's a reason for that is because. Uh, uh, in reality, there are a lot of shallow landslides, uh, they fail parallel to the slope, so infinity model looks appear to be good because there's most of the, the, the shearing. Uh, it's not a tensile. If you have a, the slope like a circular shape, in fact, depending on different regime, I'll talk a little bit later, some area will have a tensile, some area will have a shear, some area will have a combination of them. But infinity slope also has another good reason, is because they are most tractable. In other words, you can use a minimum material property and to assess your failure. And that is a, a beauty about the infinity slope model. So it's the same kind of concept. You, you're going to define factor safety. You're going to see that how much uh, resistance versus uh, how much uh, existing shear stress around the pre failure plan. The pre failure plan typically is uh, parallel to the surface. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the old uh, classical theory, we typically assume the failure surface around the interface of the bedrock and soil. Now, in the modern theory, we don't have to. Uh, so it, it could be anything you just seek for uh, whenever they reach the point. And this is the formula probably a lot of people uh, know that because they use that uh, as a very convenient. And if you pay attention to uh, there's only a few parameters you need to worry about. It's just the internal friction and coefficient. And of course, that's the angle of the slope. So then you should know that. And other, other parameter. And then so forward pressure, if you want to use effective stress uh, in the saturated condition, that forward pressure factor depend on what kind of uh, the situation you can have a different uh, forward pressure factor. Typically, uh, you use a uh, forward. But this is the beauty about it. So from the unsaturated to unsaturated, all you need to do is in finish slow model is just change the forward pressure by suction stress, nothing else. So that's, a, that's, a, that's a one of the important about the unified factor just I talked about yesterday, even though I spent the first uh, 90 minutes to talk about that. Because this framework is consistent with the classical. Just talk about the, the uh, more forward pressure increase here uh, by the suction stress. Once you know that, then you can do a factor safety analysis. And we show some of the examples. The other uh, uh, typical uh, classical method to analyze that is assuming that failure surface is this kind of a straight line or plane. Uh, when you do that, you can also do some kind of optimization. Uh, using some kind of a definition of the factor safety, you can calculate uh, uh, any kind of, this is called a finite slope. Uh, at a certain angle, uh, what will be the critical heights where the, you, uh, you can calculate that. And this is where the factor safety equal to 1 in this critical state. And this, uh, the, the new theory again is extremely simple, just 
uh, in the old case, you will find you will find this is a full operation. Now we just replace it. Uh, such uh, a Nothing. Uh, we need to add some more. Uh, the classical method. Now I want to focus a little bit about the method slides. So the method slide was invented before the computer time. So at the time, basically, you, if you have a, a typically the jaw is kind of slow because of, this is an embankment uh, design is about. And you do that because uh, uh, you don't have a, a way to know each point of what is the magnitude of stress. Even though you have some feeling, as I said, as you go to deep, the vertical stress is going to increase. But because of this uh, slope geometry, you can you cannot uh, calculate exactly the stress distribution unless you either find an analytical solution of the equilibrium equation or you use computer. So at the time, the, the method to roughly to do that is to cut the number of slides. And you see the number of slides, the contribution along the, uh, the base of slide, and to do the same thing to, to estimate it one by one to see what is the resistance and what is the driving force. And then by that, you can define a, a different way. Because when you do the cut the number of slides, one of the issue is, uh, of course, you know the wedge, how, how, how heavy it is, and the projection of that. And that's not a problem. But you don't know about it between the inter slides and what is the shear stress and what's the normal stress. So people make a different assumption, they come up with different method, you see under different name of uh, a Polinius, uh, a Bishop, or uh, uh, a modified Bishop, or a uh, uh, Young Booth method. All those methods, the difference is how they treat the inter, inter slides. Well, some of them ignore vertical, some of them ignore horizontal, some of them make assumption of certain, a certain form. There's no way to validate until the computer time comes to see how, how good it is. So the different method just decides differently. And they come up with a slightly different uh, uh, formulation. So what I show you here, for example, I use an ordinary method. You cut it down the number slide. After you do equilibrium, you will come up to this equation. The driving force, uh, the, the resistance and the driving force. So basically, the factor is Okay, this way. This is some actually not widely used in the discipline other than your technical because it requires, uh, you know, you do some kind of very tedious uh, computation work. But even though that today, I can tell you, most of the design, the geotechnical engineering design around the world, most of the country that has been used, still use this kind of method slide. And they can use it differently, ordinary, bishop, for other methods. Well, this method basically you can, you can, it's very trackable because if you look at this formula to calculate the factor safety for a given slope, you can arbitrarily cut whatever you want, uh, just for your own convenience. But you do properly, all you need to do is a, a coefficient, friction angle, and the rest of them just uh, the areas of percent of weight, and how much of the pull water pressure is if you have a, know the configuration of water table, you can calculate each slide how much from water table to the water, which is this uh, pull water pressure calculation. And I just here do some detailed calculation. For this particular configuration of the slope, you can tell about the factor safety equal to 1.3. So basically, you calculate the driving force from this and the resistance force. And you do the ratio of the resistance versus driving, and you get a, a total factor safety. What that says is 1.3 is this slope is not going to fail, and this slope is 1.3 above the, the 0.3 above the, the, the critical uh, uh, the, the, the state. So that's a different method, and, and, and in fact, the bishop is similar. You look at that formula; it's slightly different because it considers a little more about the inter uh, size of the force. So by doing that, you don't need to solve a rigorous stress distribution um, because of the computer time limit, and it is still a very powerful method even today. Many of the uh, commercial code in geotechnical uh, design, geomechanics, they actually calculate the stress as a finite element. But using the stress to put it into the, into the slide, they put it in. So it's the same kind of algorithm. And they can search for the optimum, and that the minimum uh, factor safety slope, and doing the design in a little bit more accurate way. But it is under this paradigm of a one slope, one failure surface, and all will fail, assuming in, in one moment, instantaneously. So that is the paradigm. You can see different method and they will calculate the factor safety. Uh, you know, from 1.3 gradually. As you consider more and more about interparticle stress, uh, inter slide stress, in, in fact, the, the factor safety going up for the same slope. So uh, the the expansion from saturated uh, classical to unsaturated is extremely simple now. Again, see the formula. All I did is just change the forward pressure by slightly stress. So this is the entire framework. And this is the beauty about that. Is that you, you, you don't need to invent a new parameter because you need to know the hydrological and such a parameter anyway. But once you know that, you define the suction stress. If you define suction stress, you replace the forward pressure by suction stress. You can do the calculation. So as you see that here, that you can calculate. It's the same kind of paradigm. 
So this is a summary, I just showed you the same slope, uh, but with the different uh, kind of method, the classical ordinary method, and then the calculated frequency before the watering, which means the water temperature is high, and this is after the watering, which means the water temperature is relatively lower. And you calculate the factor safety, and this is the classical method, this is the unsaturated theory that you calculate. Generally, you see that, that they are actually bigger than the classical ones, are smaller than the, than the, than the, uh, than the unsaturated. In, in part, it's because, uh, in, in this case, because uh, at the, around the failure surface, if you have this kind of water configuration, uh, this portion, the slice is above water table, so therefore they have a sucking stress. They, they make the strong of the uh, cohesive part. So that's why the slope stability uh, factor of safety is a little bit higher. So that's a classical method. To, so you see from classical to unsaturated, unsaturated and such is quite simple. In free slow model, it's the same thing. Uh, you can extend easily in free slow model. Uh, all you need to do is to uh, calculate uh, the, the factor of safety slightly differently, and as I show you. Uh, differences here. This is the equation that in the slope model. But here you just uh, uh, replace the pearl water pressure by suction stress. And here again, you do not need to fix the failure surface. You just use a Z. And Z will calculate automatically because uh, here the infinity slope model using a suction stress also allow us to integrate hydrology. Because uh, why? Because uh, how you know the suction stress? You need to know the moisture content. Uh, you need to know the, the suction profile. This is under the different kind of composition condition. And once you know that, you can calculate the suction stress. So this general for, uh, equation, you can actually fill in the framework for infinite slope model, which is quite a, uh, quite a applicable to many of the cases, both saturated and saturated. And we also, uh, in the current learning, we also uh, consider about another factor, which is due to the friction angle due to the wetting process. So sufficient material is loose, uh, you may have a high friction angle, then the deep material which is more compact. And that effect is also in these uh, models. Uh, in fact, uh, that equa this equation basically, uh, if you use a diagram, it would be a little bit better to illustrate it. It's basically the, on the surface of the welding zone. You can see that uh, there's very gradual changes, uh, and depending on how the welding zone uh, is configured. So if you can use an infinite slope model, you can also uh, calculate, the, uh, I will use an example given this parameter. So those are the parameters as I, I summarized in the morning, and those are all necessary you need to estimate the health slope under variable saturated condition. And the shear strength parameter and some of the uh, alpha n, which is unsaturated parameters. And we can see that under the steady state condition, and for example, uh, you can calculate the dimension suction that we actually talked about yesterday profile. And you can calculate the, the correspondence of suction stress uh, because you measure suction and then the moisture content and all the degree of saturation, and you can get suction stress. And as you see, the, this example I show you water table to here. And above water table for this sandy soil, in fact, that your suction stress will be quite strong here, you know, more negative. Put a particle together. And then away from that, because it's dry, it also loses the, the suction stress. So it's just like a set. Has a mixed maximum uh, suction stress and the reflector in this vertical profile. And, but if you put a framework into the, uh, the uh, spectral safety, the formula I showed you before, just replace the suction stress, uh, replace the pore water by suction stress. And you can see this kind of pattern vertically above the water table. Uh, there is uh, some strength, a strong higher factor safety, uh, much bigger than one here. And then it will go back to there's a weak zone. So, depending on uh, what kind of soil you have, as I've shown here, uh, for this particular uh, case, and you will see that, that there are some areas, there are some soils which actually the factor safety is less than one. Which, uh, in other words, uh, for, for this particular configuration, and certain kind of soil is not going to be standard, the slope is going to fail. And so you can see that, and this is a, uh, the framework where if you do a different lab, you can also assess the factor safety. So this is actually uh, allow us to do that, and you can do some steady state infiltration, and I will give it another example. Maybe you have this ascending hill slope, and uh, you can see that how the uh, effective degree of saturation and the different infiltration, and also uh, you can calculate the, the suction stress. Again, you see that that depends on the infiltration, this is steady state. So in the case of the zero infiltration, you have this case, which I showed you previously, the suction stress minimum. But as the infiltration increases, you see that sometimes it's, it's a very interesting fashion because of this nonlinear dependency. <laughs> and the effects gradually increase, but the suction stress uh, varies in, in, in a somewhat uh, interesting fashion. And then you can calculate the factor safety due to, uh, due to this case. In this illustration, uh, particular infiltration, as you see that, 
um, the case of where we have a, a, a minus 4.9 e behind uh, the power of uh, minus 7 uh, order of meters per second, that particular infiltration is going to cause a uh, failure zone about, about over 1 meter. So this is kind of framework uh, or predict that we don't need to assume the infinity slope model of where the failure surface is. It depends on your infiltration. And in this case, that you can predict that when the rain reaches the magnitude and go to that depth, and that particular slope will fail. And this is actually correlated to some of the study, uh, why the other geomorphological or the climatology study about the early time of the uh, uh, rainfall induced landslide is to use a rainfall uh, characteristic. And the rainfall characteristic, but only, as we all know, that is a size specific. But there's a reason for that, and the reason you can explain that is because for that particular site, they have a certain strength, they have a certain uh, angle resistance, but additional rain, if you reach that kind of particular infiltration magnitude, you're going to have a disappearance of uh, interparticle stress and ultimately the fact that safety could uh, be uh, equal to one, which means fail. Now, uh, we actually implement this one into a uh, some uh, framework uh, that what we call the uh, uh, in, in, in the hydrants. So here are some of the examples that you can use a, a different kind of material property. And I show you the uh, different kind of soil. And this is the framework that we go move to transient. So this is what uh, currently in 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 the uh, in, in, in model we use we use a, a Sylvasta but ES model. Of course, right now we have more move. We already start to move beyond that using a finite element which is much more accurate, also hydrological mechanical. But for the for the regional model we still have to use a point by point and each point we use a transient uh, uh, solution. So that's the hydrological model you can put it as you see that if you use an infinity model, uh, all you need to do everything you calculate is this quantity. The rest of the quantity as we all know are known for thin and soil and slope. The, the, this is the one that depends on the time and the moisture content, the suction stress and, and degree of saturation. So some of the results from this uh, particular uh, simulation, you can see that uh, the pressure head versus the distance, uh, the 45 degree is when the time to zero, which means a hydrostatic. And so as the time proceeds, the, the suction head is going to disappear. And the same thing for the, for the, for the water content. And same thing, and look at the suction stress. Uh, interestingly, it's not very clear show here. The suction stress, as you see, that it's quite a, uh, dynamically as a, uh, as a depth. And the cross commonly you can see the effect of safety here. And both of them, this is a 1.0. And here are all break of one. But at the shallow depth, depend on the time, you know, the, the, the zero hours, uh, 12, uh, six hours, 12 hours. And in this case, the 24 hours, they start to, to have a certain region less than, uh, less than a, a 1.0. So this is a, a way that actually, even though you see this uh, infinity slope model, uh, you just expand on such a region, such a region, you can show that. That, that can explain what happened uh, in certain kind of scenario of infiltration, it's going to have a failure. Uh, it's going to have a, a type of safety. Uh, so that, you know, again, you know, we just change it to different medians. So because it's an analytical model, you can change it. Uh, I won't go through to the uh, same thing. You know, this is like fine sand, and you can calculate a, a different kind of type of safety. Um, So I think that this is what I, uh, the first portion of my uh, of half. I want to focus on the second part because the second part probably has more people interested. So to summarize, uh, basically, uh, the first part I would basically say that once you use the framework which uh, we, we propose, which is hydromechanical framework, which has a very minimal property beyond what the saturated soil mechanics, basically the hydraulic property that also can capture the effect of dress, you can basically completely adopt the classical work to uh, move to from saturated to unsaturated, only to replace the water uh, forward pressure by uh, suction stress, even under CBD condition. Because uh, under the CBD condition, you have a different kind of forward pressure distribution. Different kind of forward pressure, you can come up with different moisture content, transient distribution. And then you come up with suction stress and you can calculate the practice state. So that's uh, along the same line with uh, the classical. Uh, any question before I uh, I start the, the, the last one that we can move beyond the physical model? 